Hi, I'm Seth Freuberg. I'm the Director of Options Training here at SMBU in Manhattan. I'm also the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk. So um, I'd like to share with you uh, some experiences from my past that I think uh, will be helpful to options traders. And that has to do with my history prior to options trading. I was uh, the CEO of, a, uh, of an insurance company. And the insurance business and options trading uh, have a lot of similar principles. And I always have believed that my uh, experiences in the insurance business have helped me to be uh, a better options trader. And I'd like to share with you some important principles of the insurance business and then explain to you how they uh, uh, relate to options trading and can help you in thinking through your options trading. So, uh, in fact, I wanted to point out that index options themselves are a form of portfolio insurance for uh, big money managers and big funds. Uh, so it is literally referred to as insurance in some cases, uh, and, it, and the, the principles are almost identical. So what are some of the major lessons from the insurance business? Uh, and the first lesson is that statistics matter. Now, you may not realize it, but uh, Geico can tell you how many people in the state of Missouri are going to get into a car accident in the year 2017. Uh, and they will be, they're never going to be perfect, but they're going to be right within one or two percent. It's shocking how accurate these pr actuarial projections are. And that's, that's the science of predicting the future in the insurance business is actuarial science. Uh, these things, people do dopey things like get into car accidents in predictable, statistically probable ways. And so therefore statistics do matter and are in fact critical to the economics of the insurance business. The second principle is we win if the accident never happens. If you sell an insurance policy for a home and the home doesn't burn down, uh, you don't give the premium back to the uh, policyholder. You keep that premium. You, you won. And so uh, that, that principle, it's, it's a binary event. You either uh, made money uh, or not. It's particularly binary in life insurance. You either died or you didn't. And you either got your life insurance death benefit. Uh, of course, you didn't get it, but your, your survivors will. Uh, and, um, or the insurance company gets to keep the premium uh, that year. Uh, and, and just so you know, they know exactly how many 93-year-old women in, are going to die in the state of Rhode Island this year also uh, because these things just happen in statistically predictable ways. Another thing that happens in the insurance business that's a very noticeable psychological trend is that recent events uh, create price increases. So for example, um, you can be a writer of hurricane insurance and if, if the state of Florida hasn't been hit by a hurricane for 10 years, the prices get very, very thin. The year where a hurricane hits, what do you think happens to prices uh, that next year? And they go up. And so recent events affect the way people think about things. And the prices go up because more people wake up and realize, if I don't have insurance for my home and it gets blown away, I've taken the biggest financial loss of my life. So. Um, recent events affect demand and affect prices in the insurance business. <clears throat> Another very, very important principle is to keep your capital in the market. Insurance companies uh, that write hurricane insurance every three years are never going to prosper. If they get unlucky and then one of the third years is, is, is the year of a hurricane, uh, that doesn't work economically. They've got to be in the market every year because uh, they've got to be collecting premium against that event, which will happen eventually. And so um, you've got to keep your capital in the market. Another principle in the insurance business is, is what I would call continuation bias, a belief that if something just happened to me, it's likely to happen again to me tomorrow. So if my luggage was stolen, I better start buying luggage insurance. Well, as it turns out, your luggage doesn't get stolen all that often, and luggage insurance is a very profitable part of the insurance business because people exaggerate in their minds uh, the likelihood of things happening and they overpay for them basically. And then finally, being very far from risk feels comfortable. 
Uh, there are people who, who don't insure um, the smaller hurricane events. They only insure events which are very large. Well, those don't happen very often, and you can collect a lot of premium for a very long time, and then when that big event comes, you realize you didn't collect enough premium to be able to absorb that large event. So uh, being very f far from risk may feel comfortable, but very often you're not being paid properly for the risk that is there. So how can we take these many principles of the insurance business and apply them to options trading? And I'd like to start with statistics matter. Um, you'd be surprised how accurate the statistics are in the options business as well. And there are certain trades that are predicated on these statistics working out. Well, if you test enough um, two standard deviation out, uh, you know, selling a short put and selling a short call, two standard deviations out, you will find the chances of the market closing uh, above or below the, sh you know, the short call or the short put, as, as the case may be, is about 5%. In other words, the standard deviation being, what, 95 96%. The chance of it happening is therefore 5%. Uh, the statistics hold up pretty good. And so statistics do matter in, in options. Um, another very important principle is that prices go up after a big event. In the case of insurance, we talked about hurricanes. In the case of options, we're talking about a big move, oftentimes a big move down, will cause options volatility to shoot up. And options volatility is essentially the way the market prices options through the time premium. And so uh, if you get a big event, you're going to get paid for it. And those big events don't necessarily follow one another. You'll have a hurricane one year and you can go 10 years without a hurricane. And so yet you're going to get paid very well the year after the hurricane happens. So getting into the market uh, right as a big volatile event has occurred or right after it has occurred is oftentimes a very, very profitable time in options trading. Uh, keeping your capital in the market, that's a principle that I mentioned for insurance. It's also a principle that I uh, am mentioning in options trading. Uh, it is not the best idea to, be, to keep your capital out of the market because, for example, if you've just had a big loss because the market uh, crashed and, and your positions were uh, totaled, um, Jumping right back in that next month is very often, and I have noticed for myself, one of my most profitable months of the year is a, is a month right after one of my worst months of the year. Well, that's no accident. It's because volatility often increases around those times, and those are the times that you can, in a sense, get overpaid for the options positions that you are taking. So uh, keeping your capital in the market is, is very important for the statistics of these trades to work. Um, and finally, sell into fear, don't run from it. This is a mistake a lot of options traders make. They run away from fear when in fact those are the times that you can get the best prices. Just as uh, the smart and shrewd hurricane insurance people will always be very, very present in the market right after a hurricane because they know that they're getting paid very well. The same thing with earthquakes. Earthquakes do not happen that often. The year after an earthquake occurs, earthquake insurance goes up. Um, it's not necessarily a repeating event. Those are, the, uh, those are the cases where you want to be in the market. So instead of running from risk, you actually want to run towards risk. And in those circumstances, you're likely to have a better long-term return. So keep in mind the insurance principles that apply to options trading. I can tell you, uh, having been exposed to both, the concepts are very similar. Options trading is a statistical game, and if you keep the statistical or, or insurance principles in mind while you're trading options, long term, you can become a more profitable options trader. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next week.